let's just kind of dive into hey what is what is stuff plus so you see it all over twitter we've talked about it in games especially when it comes to jerry jones a lot um so we talk about it um stuff plus location plus pitching plus what is it you know why did you all come up with this and and like what's what's significant about this yeah i mean uh i'm an old so 2008 uh, I was reading a piece by a guy named Jeremy Greenhouse who went on to work for the Cubs. Um, and it was called on that stuff. And I'd been kind of, uh, uh, yeah, he does. Uh, I'd been kind of, um, known for splitting pitches apart into, uh, their types and, and saying like, like I, I was a big early guy on Carlos Carrasco. And one of the reasons I was early on him was like, hey, his slider is really good. If you look at the whiff rates on it, his changeup is really good. Like this stuff sounds really rote now, but I, I was doing this when Carrasco was like a, a rookie. So I had always been fascinated with like sort of taking the part, the, the pitcher into parts and like looking at the pitches each separately and then putting them back together and saying, oh, this guy could be good. You know, he has the, he has the pieces, you know. Uh, and then I read this piece by Jeremy Greenhouse where he took pitch FX data and he turned it into a stuff rating. So he was talking about velocity and, and all we had back then was velocity and movement. And that's all he had. And I think Verlander was, was really high on his list. And I was like, this is, this is cool. This is the future. And so ever since 2008, I've been researching, you know, pitch by pitch. So I, I just looked at what makes sliders good. What makes fastballs good. And so I was looking at fastballs, fastballs. Oh, Velo, duh. But like, you know, we had ride. So I was like, oh, ride is good for fastballs. That makes you get you get pop ups, you get whiffs. OK, then I looked at the sliders. And I was like, oh, velo again. duh. But like, you know, we thought sliders were more about movement. No, velo is really important. Velo and drop, you know, and so I kind of went through each of these. Harry Pavlidis over baseball prospectus was doing something similar. We were all kind of researching them piecemeal. And then just what happened with machine learning is that and I don't like that it's a black box, but now that we we can basically throw all of the information that we have about pitches, the physical characteristics of pitches, we can throw that into this box and the machine sort of figures out how how it relates to outcomes. And the reason that's important is because sometimes it's you'd rather have your like cutters, you'd kind of rather have them be closer in below to your fastball because you want them to look like a fastball and then just move it the last second, right? Mm -hmm. And so you want like them to be close in velo. Some other ones like the big old, you know, Charlie Morton, Adam Wainwright curveball. Velo is not as actually as important. It's it's like a change up almost. It's like a really big pitch. So all of these movements and velos and spin is really important. All these things interact slightly differently in different ways. And I wish I could tell you exactly what makes everybody's pitch good or exactly why everyone's good. But I can tell you why i think you know like skeins for example we all talked about how his shape is bad on his fastball and some people thought that would be a big deal but you're like but dude he sits 99 like what it what, like it's not gonna be right. a problem you know <laughs> maybe it's a problem when he's 30 or 33 and he's sitting 93 and the league is sitting 96 because that's kind of where we're going you know right. then and his and then all of a sudden you know his shape on his fastball is a bigger deal but um, anyway, so stuff plus is the physical characteristics of the pitches, and that includes spin and things like seam shifted wake, which I can explain if you want, but just different things that go into it. Um, location plus is just a count and pitch type, like adjusted. Do you throw to the right locations? Um, and, uh, you know, we, we, we're, we're always, you know, tweaking it and trying to improve it. And now there's an arms race. Baseball Prospectus has one. There's you know, you'll if you go online, you'll see lots of different stuff pluses. I, I still think ours is the best, but we're all trying to improve on. We're all fighting over little decimal points right now. Yeah. Um, but uh, that's the general idea. Uh, and pitching plus actually is not just, you know, add stuff plus to location plus. It's it kind of is a third model that looks at all these different aspects, the command and the stuff in a in a third way and just sort of adds it all up its own way. So yeah. you don't, you can't, sometimes you'll look and you'll be like, why is his stuff plus this is location plus this and his pitching plus this it's, it has to do with like platoon splits. And you know, the, the, the machine is looking at it and being like, is it better to be fastball slider or, you know, fastball curve change or, you know, like, so it's kind of looking at it in a third way. 
Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna kind of nerd out here today. I think um, <laughs> OG here in the comments has a question, just like a technical question. Does the model continuously run? Does it uh, get get updated periodically? It's a it's a continuous model, like as, as data kind of feeds into it, right? Yeah, it's a continuous model. There is a little weird uh, bump. I think the thing that's kind of closest to is something like an expected woba because what it needs to do in any given year is look around all of baseball and compare this guy's pitches by its physical characteristics to all of baseball. Mm -hmm. So early on in the season, it's the aces pitching, right? So if it's just comparing aces to aces, uh, you'll find in the first week that maybe an ace has like a lower stuff plus than you expect, but it'll that like normalize yeah. after time. So it's, it's, it's basically a nightly model. I wouldn't say it's like, we don't we don't get sort of updates right after games and stuff, but it's a nightly model that runs and it looks at everything and spits out a you know new number. How have you seen um like how are how are teams using this data? Yeah, uh so team most teams have them. Uh I've had uh I've had people uh talk to me about how they wish theirs was as good as mine, so some are catching up. Mm -hmm. Um, but, um, at this point, I think, uh, the teams that care, uh, have caught up, uh, that there are teams that still don't care. The teams that care use it, uh, for scouting, you know, to find, and, and the, the way that it's actually really, really effective, the, the way that's the strongest is relievers. If you're looking to acquire a reliever at the trade deadline, or you're looking to sign someone off waivers, or you've seen one of these videos that someone's throwing, you know, at tread and they don't have, they haven't signed yet. You not only want to know the velo, you want to know the movement stuff so you can throw it into your stuff model and say, oh, yeah, maybe we should sign this guy. Um, and because relievers have really small arsenals, they're not that complicated. They're as good as their fastball and their slider. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, it, it gets a little bit more complicated, I think, for pitchers, starting pitchers, where you're like, well, you know, does he have multiple fastballs? Can he do this? Can he play off this? Can he pitch backwards? Can he do all? So it gets mm -hmm. a little bit more complicated, but they use it for scouting. They use it for picking up guys. Uh, they'll use it the trade deadline, especially to compare a guy to himself. So, like, is this guy hurt right now? Are we acquiring a hurt guy? You know, like, how does he look? Is Max Scherzer really back or not? You know, because Scherzer could have like a good game or two, but his he could not all be be all the way back. And so you'll look at his stuff numbers. But yeah. the biggest way that it gets used, and I think this is why it's exciting, is that if you're developing a player, you're developing a pitcher. You know, I think in the past they were like, well, you want a curveball? Like, you know, here's AJ Burnett's knuckle curve grip. Like, try that, you know, and they would just cycle through it. And then they'd have to like throw it and maybe get bashed in and then be like, well, not that one, you know, and mm -hmm. they wouldn't really know if it was good. They would have to kind of try it. And, you know, I've had pitchers be like, I can tell if it's good. I don't know, man. Like, can you tell ride, you know, really easily? Can you tell, you know, 16 inches of sweep from 14 inches or 12, you know, like I don't, I don't think these, like this level of precision is really that obvious. What mm -hmm. stuff plus does is say, these are good pitches. These are good combinations of pitches. These are good pitches that play off each other. Well, if you want your slider to be better, do this, like make it harder with less drop. Like Sonny Gray was like, Oh, I figured out for my sweeper. I need to make it harder with less movement. That's maybe not intuitive because this, the sweeper is like, everyone wants the big movement. Well, stuff plus says, you throw, throw it harder. That'll make it better. And you could, you could, instead of just like trying everything and seeing what works, it's more like, Hey, if you get two inches of more ride or two inches more sideways or do this, kill the vert, do this. So that's why you hear pitchers talking the way they do about their pitches. I'm always, they'll talk about, I'm trying to get more vert. Or I'm trying to get more sideways or I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do that. It's partially because of the stuff plus revolution. So it's really about like kind of improving our understanding of what pitches are good so you can teach players to better their pitches.